Hi, I'm Heather. Welcome to class. Today we're going to work on Upa Vishta Konasana, the open angle pose and variations of the pose. Before we begin, if you find this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. Hit the bell so you're notified when a new video is available. We'll get started by sitting on a blanket. So here I've got a two-fold blanket. If you feel stiff in the hips, the hamstrings, the adductors, it may be worthwhile creating more height to sit on, perhaps a three-fold blanket or a four-fold blanket, depending on how thick your blankets are. See then that your blanket is back to the back edge of your mat and start by sitting in Dandasana, bring the legs together. So it's just the buttock flesh on your blanket. The thighs are off the blanket. They're broadening as you press down the thigh bones. Reach to the fingertips, roll the shoulders back and down and feel that there's a lift from the lower spine. And then that lift corresponds with the lift through the front body, up through to the sternum. We want to maintain that lift as we take the legs wide. Let's take one leg out wide, other leg out wide, and see if you can fit your feet within the width of your mat. So we're sitting perhaps just a little behind the line of the back mat, and then the feet come within the boundary of the front edge of your mat. And we're creating a 90 degree angle between the legs. Note here, if your pelvis starts to tilt back, perhaps because there's a stiffness in the hips or the legs, the thighs will want to roll out. It will be harder to lift the chest. So if you can't manage to roll the pelvis forward, roll the inner knees down and keep the kneecaps and toes facing the ceiling, then it may be worth using more height underneath the sitting bones, under the buttocks. Fingertips to the floor. Press the head of the thighs down. And again, we're broadening the back of the thighs, the hamstring muscles broadening to the floor, broadening and opening the back of the knees. All the while, we're lifting up through the lumbar spine. So the top of the sacrum moves in, lumbar spine moves in, chest lifts and spreads. Now let's bring the legs back together in Dandasana. And we're going to explore Taking the legs out wide in unison, so both legs out at the same time, and using the arms, similar to how we would jump the arms and legs wide for our standing poses. So let's see how we go. Inner legs are together to start. Bring the hands in front of the chest, inhale, and then as you exhale, you'll need to lean back a little bit to float the legs up off the floor, enough that you can Take the legs out and the arms out. And then we'll bring the legs back in, bring the arms back in. Start with the hands together, fingertips touch, inhale. And exhale, use the momentum of the arm action to help bring the legs back in together. Let's do that a few times. Inhale, exhale, arms and legs wide. And make sure you maintain that lift in the lumbar. Inhale, exhale arms and legs back to Dandasana. Let's go again. Inhale, exhale. Upavishta Konasana. Inhale, exhale. Dandasana. Inhale, exhale. Have a look at your knees. Are they rolling out? Are they rolling in? Can you keep the kneecaps and the toes facing the ceiling? Inhale, exhale. Dandasana. Let's go again. Inhale, Exhale, inhale, exhale. One more time, inhale, exhale. And back together, inhale and exhale. To give us a sense of how much we want the thighs to work, that idea of really pressing the thighs down to the floor, we're going to use the block underneath the thigh bones, close to the sitting bones, but not under the sitting bones. And if I turn sideways, you'll be able to see where we place the brick. So this idea now will be using the momentum of 
kicking our heels forward to place the thighs on the brick. Let's put the front corner, the top corner of the brick into the buttock crease. So it's just in front of the sitting bones. And you can start with the brick on the diagonal and then we kick the heels forward to press the thighs down and lift the buttocks up off the floor. And you'll note I'm leaning forward to really work with the thighs pushing down. As soon as I start to lean back, I lose the capacity to push strongly down. So let's come back off the brick and we'll do a few times. Make sure it's coming up high to the upper part of the hamstrings. So you can start with the front corner of the brick wedged into that buttock crease. Inhale. Exhale as you kick your heels forward, press your thighs down, lift up the chest. And then bend your knees, fall back off the brick. Let's go again. Inhale. Exhale. Kick the heels forward, press the thighs down, lift the sternum and take the arms up. Now you'll note you'll be on a slight diagonal, the torso and the arms on a slight diagonal. Let's lower the arms, bend the knees, come back off the brick. Let's go again and we'll see if we can reach forward to catch the big toes or the ankles. Inhale. Exhale. Kick the legs forward. Start by lifting the arms, lifting the chest and then reach forward. Can you catch the big toes? Lift the chest and drive the thighs down so that when you drive the thighs down, it feels like you're creating that rebound lift through the sternum. And then release, come back off your brick. Now remember, if you can't catch the toes, that's no problem. You can reach forward towards your shins. Let's go one more time. Inhale, exhale, kick forward, reach the arms up, and then go for the big toe grip. Lift the sternum as a rebound from the action of driving your thighs down. And then come off your brick and have a moment of rest. Now we're going to do the same thing for Upavishta Konasana. We need two bricks, one for each thigh. Start with the heels apart and wedge your bricks close to the buttock crease. You might like to lift the feet up. Lean back enough that you can wedge the front corner of your brick into the buttock crease. And as you're ready, kick the heels forward, press your thighs down so that you get that rebound through the anterior spine and the chest. And then to come off the bricks, bend your knees, fall back down onto the buttocks. Let's go again. Inhale. Exhale. Kick forward, press down. Raise the arms. Lift the anterior spine. And then lower the arms. Fall back, come off your bricks, let's go again, inhale and exhale. Propel yourself forward, lift the lumbar spine, take the arms up, front body long and then arms down, come back off your bricks. This time let's see can we catch the big toes. Inhale, exhale, drive your thighs down, raise the arms up and reach out and perhaps you're only reaching the shins, that's fine. Go for the ankles if you can, go for the big toes if you can. And remember there's that idea of when you press down, thigh bones down into the bricks, you get that rebound through the lift of the chest. Then raise the arms, lower the arms and come back off your bricks and have a moment of rest. We're going to come back to sitting on our blanket. Take the blanket towards the floor behind the mat. And as you sit, stretch the legs forward again. And you can choose. Are you going to take the legs out together or one leg at a time? Have a belt nearby. Some of us may find that helpful. And we're going to see, can we come into a forward bend here. But first let's do Pajva Upavishta Konasana, the side open angle pose. Take your belt and I've diminished the loop so I'm going to forget about the loop and use the rest of the belt. Put that around the ball of the right foot. I'm mirroring you now. So ball of the right foot, hold on with your two hands 
hands apart, turn your chest, lift up the sternum. Now remember, the lift of the sternum originates from that idea of pushing down the thighs, lifting the lower back so that the anterior spine, the front spine, can lift. So then as you turn, you're facing the right leg, but look back at the left leg, what's happening there? Is it just dropped? Have you forgotten about that? Can you roll the inner left knee down, lengthen the inner left foot away from the groin? Now we see if we can start to come into a forward bend over this right leg. Start to move yourself forward. So you're gently pulling on the strap, flexing at the hip, and sweeping this left armpit chest around towards the right leg. You can walk your hands along the belt according to your flexibility. If you can reach the foot, reach the foot, but stay with the lift in the anterior spine initially. Press the head of the thighs down. The weight will be very significantly in this right thigh now, but can you press the head of the left thigh down as well? From that action of pressing the head of the left thigh down, sweep the left armpit chest around towards the right foot. If you can go further, draw yourself forward over the right leg. All the while, move this left armpit chest around. Perhaps you can catch your left wrist with your right hand, press the ball of the foot into the back of the right hand and fold further forward and down. Then can you slide the left heel away from the right groin? Now to come out of the pose, raise the head up, release the grip, come back up through our upright Upavishta Konasana. And then we'll swap sides. Take your belt, put that around the ball of the left foot and then turn your chest. So you're facing the left leg. See that you get an awareness of this right armpit chest. Can you move the right armpit chest around towards that inner left foot? And be mindful of the back leg. It's not just flopping out. Work the thighs, both thighs pressing down, inner right knee and thigh rolls down, and the inner foot, particularly feel into this ball of the big toe, lengthen the ball of the big toe away from the groin. So once you've established awareness of this back leg, then we start to move forward over the left leg. So start by bringing in a deeper flexion here in the hip. You can walk your hands along the strap towards the foot. Perhaps you can reach the foot. And all the while, we're moving this right armpit chest around towards the left leg. Remember, we're keeping the breastbone lifted initially. So as you press the thighs down, the rebound lift through the anterior spine and the sternum. If you can go deeper, perhaps you can bend the elbows, fold over the leg. And maybe you can catch the right wrist with your left hand, press the ball of the foot into the back of the left hand and fold further forward over the leg. Go on sweeping the right armpit chest around towards the inner left leg. But slide the right heel away from the left groin. See if you can press down the head of the right thigh to keep the right sitting bone down. Raise the head up. Release the grip. Come to sit all the way up. We're back in Upavishta Konasana upright. Now we try to come forward between the legs. And if your loop is a large loop, it's long, perhaps you'll be able to use your belt around both feet to start. If not, place your hands on your shins to start. Press the balls of the big toes into the belt. 
so the inner feet are moving away from the groins, and peel the balls of the little toes back towards the outer hips. So there's a feeling, a connectivity between what you're doing in this outer foot to the outer hip, outer hips drawing back in to the midline. When we've got our belt here, we may be leaning forward a little, drive your thighs down to create that rebound lift through the anterior spine and the chest. And then if you have the capacity, you can bend the elbows, draw yourself forward. Start with the preliminary flexion being in the hips. Perhaps you can walk your hands along the belt, catch the outer feet and keep the sternum lengthening forward as you fold forward and down. Then can you resist the outer hips back and down? Sometimes it's helpful to use your hands, the thumbs towards the groins and the fingers towards the outer hips and roll towards the finger side. So you're keeping the outer hips grounded. Sternum forward. See if you can keep your hips in that placement, outer hips back down and reach to the outer feet again. Draw the shoulders away from the neck. Slowly raise the head up and let's release. Come to sit up and bring your legs into a simple cross leg position so that we can relax the groins for a moment. There is another approach that we can use to practice Parjva Upavishta Konasana, the side open angle pose, and that is with a folded chair. If we have the folded chair, I've got the bottom of the seat facing me. I'm going to bring the top of the chair into the thigh crease so that my pelvic bone is felt on the top of the chair. And then I turn, so as I'm pushing down into the chair with my hands, I can use that pressure to help me turn to the right leg. And then as I'm folding, I'm pulling the chair into my pelvic bone to fold over the chair, walk the hands along the chair legs. All the while I'm lengthening the left heel away from the groin. And we pause at that point before we flex the spine. So here I'm getting flexion in the hip, but at this stage I'm still keeping the spine reasonably straight to keep length on the front body. Then if I have the capacity, I fold further, reaching the hands further along the legs of the chair. And remember we're wanting to sweep this left armpit chest around towards the right leg as we come forward and down. Then slowly raise your head up, walk your hands back in. Come to sit all the way up and let's take the chair to the other leg. So again, bring the chair top into the thigh crease. It's coming right up to the pelvic bone so that you can feel your pelvic bone on the chair top. Turn, use your hands, press down into the chair to help you facilitate the twist. So you're turning towards the left leg, all the while not forgetting about this right leg. Lengthen the inner right heel away from the groin. Then start to walk the hands along the chair seat. Draw the anterior spine up. Sweep the right armpit chest around towards the inner left leg. And if you have the capacity, walk your hands further along the legs of the chair. Go on turning this right armpit chest around. Walk the hands further and further. Fold down over the chair. Breathe smoothly, press down the head of the right thigh, then raise the head up, walk the hands in, come to sit up and bring the chair into the middle. Now the chair should sit above the pubis, so it's coming into the lower abdomen. And you can keep that there, the chair will want to slip unless you hold it there, so use your hands, hold the chair there so that you're feeling that you're folding the pelvis forward. There's a rotation, the pelvis is rotating over the thigh bones. Walk your hands forward along the chair, 
press your thighs down, create that rebound lift through the sternum, outer shoulders down. Then if you can go further, walk your hands further along the chair legs. You can bend the elbows, but watch your shoulders don't creep into the neck. Draw your shoulders away from the neck. If the elbows are bent, feed the upper arms back into the shoulder joint and draw the outer shoulder blades in without squeezing the inner shoulder blades together. The whole time our thighs are pressing down, lengthening the inner feet away from the groins. Slowly raise the head up, walk your hands back along the chair, come to sit up and again let's rest in our simple cross legs so that the inner thigh muscles, the adductors, can have some reprieve. We'll take the legs out wide again, Upavishta Konasana. This time we're going to do Parigvritta, which is the revolved version of the pose. Take your chair again over the right leg and bring the chair back into the thigh crease. So again, you can feel your pelvic bone there. This time, instead of turning towards the leg, we're turning away from the leg. So as you turn away from the leg, you'll be turning more towards your left leg. Then can you reach your right hand down, turn the palm up and back towards the chair leg. If you have the mobility, we go further by moving the elbow towards the floor, upper arm, over onto the chair, bring the back of the shoulder to the chair seat if you have that capacity. And then let's take the left hand up and over. Perhaps you can reach for the chair legs behind you. Use the chair to help you open the chest up towards the ceiling. So initially to encourage that, perhaps you can lift the left buttock, dig the left heel down, lift the left buttock so that you feel you can get more rotation. Turning the left side chest up towards the ceiling, lengthening the right waist along the thigh, along the chair. And once you feel that you've got your rotation, peel the left elbow tip back, look up towards the ceiling. Then can you slide the left heel away from the groin to Plant the left buttock back down. Then release the grip of the chair with your left hand. Slowly come up and we'll swap sides. Chair over onto your left leg and we turn away from the leg. So now we turn to face the right leg so that we can lengthen the left side body over our left leg and chair. Can you turn your left palm up, reach the hand back towards the chair. You can let the chair lean down into the floor this way. The elbow starts to move forward as you intend to bring the back of the shoulder more and more towards the chair. Lengthen your waist over the chair. And then this right arm can reach over. Can you find the chair legs? Walk the hand along the chair leg. And then to pivot the chest, it might be helpful for you to dig the right heel down, let the right hip lift, let the right buttock lift. Peel the right elbow tip back as you turn the chest up. Look up. And then can you slide the right heel away from the groin and Press the head of the right thigh down to bring the right buttock further down towards the floor. Then slowly raise the arm up. Come to sit up, all the way up. And we'll put the chair in front of us so that again we can come into simple cross legs and relax our groins. Let's do Paschimottanasana to finish. Inner legs together, inner feet together. Have a two-fold blanket underneath the buttocks, but make sure that the thighs are free. Thighs can press down to the floor. Remember the work we did on our brick 
pressing the thighs down into the brick to create that rebound lift through the chest. Maintain that lift through the chest as you stretch the arms up, inhale and exhale. Reach forward and catch the outer feet if you can. If not, you can place your hands to your shins or perhaps put your belt around your feet and hold on that way. But gone driving the thighs down, rebound the lift in the chest, inhale, the outer shoulders are down, exhale, come further forward. So perhaps you can bend the elbows, lengthen the abdomen along the thighs and fold forward and down, lengthen the back of the neck as you point the crown of the head towards your toes. Feed the upper arms back into the shoulder joint, draw the outer shoulder blades in and go on rolling the inner thighs down, keeping the inner feet in contact. Broad in the back thighs, broad in the back knees. Slowly raise the head up, lift the chest up and let's raise the arms up as we come all the way up and then arms out and down to come out of the pose. That's it for today. Thanks for joining me. For more in-depth teaching, check out the video library on my website, heatherkitchenyoga.com.au. The link is in the description box below.